Hey guys, so today I'm going to take you on a garden tour. This is the first tour for 2022 and I am gardening in New Jersey zone 6B. So let me show you what's blooming, what's budding up and a few changes around the garden. So this flower bed is looking very beautiful. Lots of things are growing in here and I'll show you a closer look at what I have in this garden bed. So let's start here with the daffodils. They are at the very end already. The last ones sort of left are the Sir Winston Churchill and they are way at the end. Um, I do have a video which has the daffodils from last year and the different varieties that I have in my garden. So I'll link that down below in case you're interested in looking at that. I have here some foxgloves and I see that they are budding up. I also have some penstemon and I think this is a short variety, um, but I am seeing a few little buds on it. And as long as the rabbits don't eat it this year, I may have some flowers. Then I have this peony here, which is just about to bloom in the next week or so. Um, so that should be beautiful. And I have catmint, I have two of them. And I see here, this one is sort of very close to blooming in the next day or two, but lots of lots of buds all on this plant and just ready to explode with blooms. Um, I have a lot of things that are covered because I have a lot of rabbits and they are very damaging as well as the deer. And this is a coneflower I winter sowed last year. And it's uh, I think called Green Twister. Um, so I'm trying to protect it as long as I can and see if I can get it to flower this year. Here are some more foxgloves. And a couple of them are showing some buds as well. And I think that these will be blooming in the, probably in early June. Over here, I have a oryngium, which I put in here from bare root last year. And I hope to see this flower this year. This is a sedum autumn joy. Um, and it is covered because either the rabbits or the deer actually ate this, even though it is deer resistant, possibly rabbit resistant. But anyway, it is covered now. It has recovered since the damage, um, but I'm gonna keep it covered just in case. This is the Rose Campion. I winter sow this every year. Um, it self seeds also, but I just always want to ensure I have some. It is a lot like lamb's ear, but it is getting ready to start putting out some buds. So back here, I have two delphiniums. Uh, they are caged up because last year the bunnies just kept eating them alive. And these were winter sown last year. Um, I put them in the ground and so I'm hoping I will actually get flowers this year. I have a lot of agastache. This is a white agastache. And I think I might have to take this one out and put it somewhere else, a little, a little close to the peony there. But um, anyway, I've got three garas here. Again, had to protect them because they were putting on some growth and then suddenly they were tiny again. So I'm assuming the rabbits had chewed them up and now they're putting some growth back on again. I've got this very large peony and this has been always such a huge, huge plant. Um, I need to get a bigger cage for it because it's just spilling out of it. Um, I also have some 
Cherry Brandy Radeckia. And some of these were winter sown last year. So this one and that one in the cage as well as one right next to it. The rabbits do tend to like to nibble on it. So I have uh, protected it. It's interesting because the seed packet says it's an annual, but actually for me, it comes back every single year. Back here, I do not know if this is a weed. I am assuming it is, but uh, I can't remember what I planted here sometimes. So we'll wait and see. This one here is another Eryngium. This, look at this, it is humongous. Um, it's doing so much better than the other one in the front. And uh, hopefully, I think this one will be putting out flowers this year. This here is a shrub. This is a St. John's wort, and it puts out yellow flowers. Uh, it's a little behind because I had cut it back in my spring cleaning, and then we got a bunch of cold days, and it killed all the new growth. And it, you know, it's okay. It flushed all back out, but it just put it back a, a little bit. Uh, I think next year I'm going to hold off on my spring cleaning until just a bit later and let it um, sit for a while. This crazy mess back here is bee balm. And this bee balm I had winter sown and planted out last year. Um, and it was barely anything, but it has exploded. I had to get rid of a bunch of it. Um, and I might have to get rid of a bunch more. Um, but it's filling in the space, which is very, very nice. I do like that. But it might get a little out of control. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. I've got a ton more of the Rose Campion here. I do not know what this is. <laughs> it might be a weed. I have no idea what it is. And uh, I figured I would let it grow and see, see what I've got. I don't think I planted this. It, it just does not look familiar one little bit. Back here, I also have uh, more Agastache. And this is a uh, purple variety. Another Delphinium back there. Um, these are brown-eyed Susans or black-eyed Susans, and I did have to cover them again. The rabbits do seem to really like that plant. One more gigantic Eryngium. Some more white Agastache. And these are humongous in comparison to the ones um, back there and some more bee balm um yeah i've got a lot of it uh i also have dotted around some snapdragons that overwintered uh these are just some small snapdragons that i bought at walmart last year um i never took them out and they overwintered so bonus and then these are three grasses here, which is the little blue stem. These are some um, Millennium Alliums. I've got a cluster of um, Veronica's and these are a pretty purple type. I forgot the variety. Um, another snapdragon has overwintered and then this is a purple agastache um, I have a bunch of yarrow I had it in a different spot in this garden bed I moved it here I saved a few clumps and last year they did nothing and this year they're looking so beautiful I really hope that they're going to flower this year now the smaller ones are ones I winter sowed and these are more of a pastel color, but uh, I don't know that they'll flower this year, um, but I just wanted to add some more in case these didn't make it. But now it seems I might have double the amount, uh, but that's okay because I wanted to fill this whole bottom area with yarrow.
I have a bunch of lavender. I never ended up cutting this back a little further to the ground, but it's already leafing out. So I just left it alone, um, but it's looking great. Absolutely beautiful, getting gigantic. Um, there are like three or four plants in here. I probably should really separate them a little bit more, but I don't know that I'm going to do that and because otherwise I will sacrifice the blooms if I do that. Um, this is a grass. I'll put up the name. I don't remember it. Um, it's very, very pretty. Lots of pretty plumes on it. Um, so that is the update on this bed. Now let me take you to some other areas in the garden. In this garden bed, sadly, the skip laurels did not fare well through the winter. I am talking to the landscaper who put these in to see if they can be replaced or if we end up with something different. Um, I don't want to deal with this every year if this is what happens during the winter. But over here I have my two hydrangeas and this is a Kawusa dogwood. And then I have a holly shrub. And there's another holly shrub over here. Um, over here, I was thinking of putting my dahlias, but I really can't do anything until they deal with the shrubs here because I don't want them stepping all over my dahlia. So we'll see what I end up doing. I have a few foxgloves here, and then I dug out a bunch of um, lilies that I had in the ground, some bulbs. Uh, because I thought the at rabbits were eating it, but uh, this got eaten over here. So I guess maybe it's a bug or slug or something. Um, but yeah, the, I figured maybe I could save them. Uh, it's not, not really the case. Over here, I have a lot of my winter sewing and I have a video which I transplanted them and I revealed also all my winter sewing but uh, these are bachelor buttons right here and these are starting to bud up so hopefully I will get some bachelor buttons because we're one of these days we're going to get 80 degrees might be a little too hot for them so we'll see that is a Dara and that is looking very nice uh, over here, I have Feverfew, and this is um, Status. Then I've got um, Straw Flowers, some Larkspur, Snapdragons, some Scabiosa, and a few Snapdragons dotted in there. These are seeds that I got from Brampton Gardener and so they didn't make it too well when i transplanted them but some of them did so those are looking pretty nice the ones that made it through while the chicken wire doesn't look great the thing is i have rabbits uh, that come through this property and they just devour just about everything so in order to even have these flowers um, you know grow i i have to cover them and then when they get taller some of them i might have to figure something else out because the deer may want to eat those flowers so we will see this bed here um, the tree line made it through winter perfectly fine and then i have three viburnums and these viburnums are a double file viburnum, which has a white lace cap flower. Um, and those are in bloom now, and they look quite beautiful. Um, I'm sure every year will get a little better and it will look even more spectacular every year. Um, that tree over there is a maple tree. It's a I think uh, October Glory Maple. And then over here, I have a Kwanzaa Cherry tree. Uh, my neighbors back there have a much larger one. So one day this one will catch up. This tree was added last fall as well. 
and this is a forest pansy red bud. Um, we didn't get that many blooms on it because usually they do struggle a little bit in the beginning. Um, we also had to cut off a lot of branches that didn't make it through, but we are starting to see it leaf out and they are looking just such gorgeous maroon color on the leaves. So I'm looking forward to it getting even bigger and better. In this garden bed, there were a lot of changes last year, mainly with the large pine tree that got taken out. And then uh, these three trees added to sort of finish out our tree line. And um, I had hydrangeas in here and I still have them, but we rearranged them from last fall. And so there's one, it's a twist and shout. It's a lace cap hydrangea. And the same one is on the other side. And the reason for the change is because back here, we added a red twig dogwood. And it's a variegated red twig dogwood, which I just absolutely fell in love with. And I'm very happy to have put this in here and I'm looking forward to it getting very, very large. Um, you know, we may have had some browsing on here, looking at the stems, but uh, once it gets much larger, puts on some growth, um, I think it, it can withstand some browsing. Um, so in this bed, I transplanted a few things into this bed as well. I do have some alliums that I had planted last year in the fall so those are starting to bloom and there are a few dotted around that is an astilbe um, and it's getting close to blooming um, some of the rabbits did nibble on it so i'm hoping uh, they will stay away from it otherwise i will have to cage that up i have another astilbe here it's a different variety I don't know the type on this one. I believe that one is a chocolate kiss. Um, not 100% sure though. Um, and then I did uh, transplant into here some of my rose campion, but they're not happy with the transplant. And it's because they're, they were so much bigger. Um, usually I can transplant them when they're small and they haven't started to put out um, buds and they're starting getting ready to bud out so this one didn't seem to be bothered too much by the transplant this one cl clearly is just not happy at all I could probably cut it back and it'll probably regrow and then this one too is just flopped over but uh, might cut them back and I'm sure they'll come back I also moved this Japanese painted fern over to this garden bed. Um, it was on the side of the house and I think it'll do better here, at least I'm hoping so. It's not put on a whole lot of growth and I've had it for about three years. So hopefully here it will do better and put on in more growth and get larger. Um, so over here I have two different columbines. This one is a black columbine which I had winter sown a couple years now, and this will be the second year it flowers. And then this one is a black barlow. So, sorry, that one is a black barlow. This one is the Nora barlow, and it's a pink one. Uh, I winter sowed that last year. Um, it only had foliage last year. And so this is the first year it's going to flower. I'm very excited and I want to collect the seeds from this. Um, to get more of these. I also put in here some other astilbes that I had dotted uh, around the area. So I wanted this to be a little bit more of a shade bed because once those trees grow, um, this house shades this area and this these trees will shade the area. Um, it gets morning sun, but afternoon completely shaded and uh, it'll be more of a shade garden. So one is still be here, and then some hookras that were out front, and I moved them back. Bunnies were browsing on these, so I'm hoping they will recuperate a little bit better. 
back here. Um, they probably might find it, but we'll see. And then one more astobe here. And sadly, the, because we were doing a lot of this transplanting back here, um, the giant alliums that I had growing um, got really damaged. So I don't think I'll see these this year, but uh, you know, maybe the bulbs will make it next year and uh, we'll, maybe we'll get some flowers next year. So something I've been working on is creating a veggie garden, a raised bed garden. Um, and we're still working on this. It's been so slow going, um, you know, between uh, putting some cardboard to kill the grass, um, not, ha not having to dig through there, um, and got the beds built. These are Vigo garden beds. Um, I have to tell you, dealing with a company has been wonderful. Any issue that I've had, they've addressed immediately. Um, so I really do recommend uh, these beds. And uh, yeah, they've been, they've been super great um, to deal with. So I have four of them. The fourth one has not been built. And then this pile here is really to fill the beds so there's a little less soil that we would have to fill it with but I still have to level these beds um, so that's still on the agenda and then I'm going to mulch this area and I'm not sure if the rabbits can get in here so not sure if I need to put some chicken wire um, but that will be something else that I have to figure out um, but I plan on putting also maybe some grow bags. I'm unsure about this little space here if I'm going to add grow bags or flowers. Um, but that is to be seen and a lot of work still ahead of me. Uh, in this area, this is the side yard and I'm still figuring this area out. Um, but over here, I have a bunch of foxgloves. They really love this area. So I might fill it more with foxgloves and I have some Shasta daisies as well. That's the shorter green foliage there. Um, so yeah, I really like that the uh, foxgloves are growing great here because the rabbits usually come tramping through here <laughs> and They've eaten uh, some of those grasses over there, uh, maybe deer even have. So yeah, they don't touch this stuff. So that might be what I grow here. Um, I also have a lot of rose campion. This is where I had um, taken a few of them from and hoping that I could transplant them. Because I'm so late in doing gardening things, um, unfortunately they were already well, very well grown and, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to survive the transplant, but anyway, um, have a bunch of things dotted around here. Some Veronica, some more Shasta daisies. I mean, excuse me, some snow cap daisies. And over here, these are Agastache and they're supposed to be rabbit and deer resistant. Well, guess what? They ate that too. I mean, these deer and rabbit are crazy here. Um, they'll eat just about anything. Um, but anyway, I do have more rose campion up front over here. And these two, of course, are the transplants, the ones that look super sad. <laughs> and uh, maybe they'll make it through. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll get better over time. Maybe I have to cut, cut out a few of the... Uh, stems, but I also brought into this bed uh, two of the twist and shout hydrangeas and what I did is I divided um, from my bigger hydrangeas and got these two smaller ones to put here because this area constantly gave me a lot of trouble with really having something that would survive here. Um, between the rabbit and the deer, etc. So I figured I would fill it with that uh, hydrangea, which generally is not bothered by any of those um, pests. And then also um, the rose campion usually does pretty well. I thought the agastache would be another one, and generally it is. 
but uh, something decided to eat those leaves. Anyway, um, that is the garden tour. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. I actually transplanted two hydrangeas into uh, these containers as well. Um, I didn't want to really buy annuals, but I might. I might put some petunias around here and down here just to kind of give it some more color because these hydrangeas may not actually put out any blooms. They kind of suffered through the winter. Um, so I figured I'd put them in pots and see how they do uh, in those pots. Anyway, now that is the end of this tour. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this, hit the like button and I'll see you next time. Bye.